repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, so that your sins may be forgiven, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Christ is risen, alleluia. He is risen indeed, alleluia. Well, good morning and welcome to Holy Communion on this, the third Sunday of Easter. Today we gather in this church and dedicate this service to the memory of Constables Glenn Humphreys, Constable Joss Preshney, Leading Senior Constable Lynette Taylor, and Senior Constable Kevin King, who died in the most tragic of circumstances on the freeway that borders our parish on Wednesday evening of this week. We remember their family and friends and colleagues who grieve their deaths so grievously at this time. May they be surrounded with your love, know your peace, and know the support of this community of Melbourne, Victoria, and beyond. And may they, with all the souls, rest in peace and rise in glory. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and, and peace, peace to God's people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, your Son made himself known to his disciples in the breaking of the bread. Open the eyes of our faith, that we may see him in his redeeming works, who is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Therefore, let the entire house of Israel know with certainty that God has made both Lord and Messiah, this Jesus whom you crucified. Now when they heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and to the other apostles, Brothers, what should we do? Peter said to them, Repent and be baptised every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ, so that your sins may be forgiven, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is for you, for your children, and for all who are far away everyone whom the Lord our God calls to him. And he testified with many other arguments and exhorted them, saying, Save yourselves from this corrupt generation. So those who welcomed his message were baptised, and that day about 3,000 persons were added. Hear the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Psalm 116. I love the Lord because he heard my voice, the voice of my supplication. 
because he inclined his ear to me. In the day that I called to him, the cords of death encompassed me, the snares of the grave took hold on me. I was in anguish and sorrow. Then I called upon the name of the Lord. O oh Lord, I beseech you, deliver me. How shall I repay the Lord for all his benefits to me? I will take up the cup of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. Grievous, Grievous in the sight of the Lord is the death of his faithful ones. O oh Lord, I am your servant, your servant and the child of your handmaid. You have unloosened my bonds. I will offer you a sacrifice of thanksgiving and call upon the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people in the courts of the house of the Lord. Even in your midst, O Jerusalem, praise the Lord. A reading from the first letter of Peter. Therefore, prepare your minds for action. Discipline yourselves. Set all your hope on the grace that Jesus Christ will bring you when he is revealed. Like obedient children, do not be conformed to the desires that you formerly had in ignorance. Instead, as he who called you is holy, be holy yourselves in all your conduct. For it is written, you shall be holy, for I am holy. If you invoke as the Father the one who judges all people impartially according to their deeds, Live in reverent fear during the time of your exile. You know that you were ransomed from the futile ways inherited from your ancestors, not with perishable things like silver or gold, but with the precious blood of Christ, like that of a lamb without defect or blemish. He was destined before the foundation of the world, but was revealed at the end of the ages for your sake. Through him you have come to trust in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory, so that your faith and hope are set on God. Now that you have purified your souls by your obedience to the truth, so that you have genuine mutual love, love one another deeply from the heart. You have been born anew, not of perishable, but of imperishable seed, through the living and enduring word of God. For all flesh is like grass, and its glory like the flower of grass. The grass withers, and the flower falls, but the word of the Lord endures forever. That word is the good news that was announced to you. Hear the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Lord Jesus, open the scriptures to us. Make our hearts burn while you speak to us. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Lord Glory Jesus. to you, Lord Jesus Christ. On that day, two of the disciples were going to a village called Emmaus about seven miles from Jerusalem. 
and talking with each other about all these things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came near and went with them. But their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And he said to them, What are you discussing with each other while you walk along? They stood still, looking sad. Then one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answered him, Are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place in these days? Jesus asked them, What things? And they replied, The things about Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and leaders handed him over to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since these things took place. Moreover, some women of our group astounded us. They were at the tomb early this morning, and when they did not find his body there, they came back and told us that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but they did not see Jesus. Then he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are, and how slow of heart, to believe all that the prophets have declared. Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things and then enter into his glory? Then, beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them the things about himself in all the scriptures. As they came near to the village to which they were going, he walked ahead as if he were going on. But they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us because it is almost evening, and the day is now nearly over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to them. But their eyes were opened, and they recognized Jesus, and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, Were not our hearts burning within us? while he was talking to us on the road, while he was opening the scriptures to us. That same hour they got up and returned to Jerusalem, and they found the eleven and their companions gathered together. They were saying, The Lord has risen indeed, and he has appeared to Simon. Then they told what had happened on the road, and how he had been made known to them in the breaking of the bread. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. May the words of my lips and the meditations of our hearts be always acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and redeemer. Amen. Some words of reflection on this collection of scripture readings set for the third Sunday of Easter. In those days following the crucifixion of Christ, Jerusalem, the city at the center of their world, was in turmoil. What were the disciples, the followers of Jesus of Christ, to make of the events that had occurred in that city? What were the people of that city and that land to make of those events? We gather in a time of turmoil for the world. What are we to make of the events of the COVID-19 pandemic? Will our world ever be as it was? It is too early to say. Back in February, March 1991, the world was in turmoil. A coalition of forces had invaded to Kuwait to eject 
the army of Saddam Hussein. People around the world ceased to travel. People feared what would happen. Scud missiles rained down on Israel. What would that mean for that land, the people of the Middle East and the world? Just as now, there was much fear about the unknown. And so one of my supervisors called me into his office, seized my identification, my car keys, and said, young man, you need to go on leave. You've worked two years without a break. He was right. And so I bought a bag, packed some belongings, and I also bought the equivalent of the traveler's scriptures. Let's go 1991. Its partner is Fordo's Guide to the World. This one was the budget guide to the United States of America, which I read on a British Airways flight to New York. This was meant to be a trip of a lifetime. It was to become a transformative vacation. I took the Amtrak from New York to Buffalo and upstate New York. When I opened this ancient guidebook, it shows that I stayed at the Niagara Falls International Youth Hostel, then on Ferry Avenue. I think I found a diner called Carver's on Niagara Street near the junction with Ferry Avenue. A diner owned and operated by an African-American woman who'd fled from the states of the South in the 60s to the relative safety of Buffalo and Niagara Falls. And so I walked from that diner to see the falls. Huge ice falls were sat at the bottom of the falls. It was still late, it was only at the end of winter, the beginning of spring. The guidebook says to really embrace the falls, you need to cross to the Canadian side. And so I crossed, I think it's Rainbow Bridge, and the customs officer challenged me and asked me why I wasn't staying in Canada on the beautiful side of the falls. And so I turned left and walked towards the falls, the roar growing louder and louder. My mind is taken back to the beautiful green lawns to the right, to the visitor center and the cafe, and then the viewing area adjacent to the falls. Even though you can see the falls as you walk towards them, nothing prepares you for the sheer power of the millions of gallons of water per second that flow over the falls. Back in 1991, you could stand quite close to the edge. And I remember standing there absolutely mesmerized by the power and force of nature. I stood and stood, and at each attempt to walk away, I was drawn back to the power of the falls. And so it is in our scripture readings today. The disciples, they walk along the road to Emmaus, a bit like I walked along the road to Niagara Falls. They do not know who walks with them, just as I didn't know the power of the falls. They reach that house, and in the breaking of the bread, that power of Christ is revealed to them in his presence. Just as I stood next to the falls, and when I put my hands on the rail and looked, the power of nature was revealed to me. As a consequence of that encounter with the power of nature, and that consequence of other people I met on that trip, my life was changed. I followed a new path. And so it is today in these scripture readings, in our encounter with Christ, that our lives are changed and transformed. 
that we find new life in the living of our lives in the present tense, just as I found new life in the consequence of that visit to the United States of America so many years ago. The challenge in these times of pandemic, in the challenge at any time in our life, is to see what is immediately beside us. To see the power of Christ revealed in our neighbours, in our family, in our friends. To see the power of Christ revealed to us in the reality of this world, in the actions of the healthcare workers and food distribution workers to name but a few around the world who in their selfless acts of compassion and service bring love, peace and hope. The power of those events of the encounter with Christ leads with us a message to share that power with those around us. Just as I no doubt shared the power of my trip with photographs in the telling of the story today and in years gone by. So for thus, those of us who've encountered the living Christ, let us share the power of his presence in, in our lives and with those around us. Let us in the sharing of that story bring light, love and hope. Amen. Let us together affirm the faith of the Church. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, and for us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who of the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in the one holy Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the world and for the church. Let us pray to the Lord revealed to us in word and sacrament. Gracious God, help your people to search the scriptures to bring us nearer to our Lord. As we pray for Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury, Philip, Archbishop of Melbourne, and for Geoffrey, Archbishop of Adelaide and Primate of the Anglican Church of Australia, and for Geneve, our Bishop. May the hearts of Christians burn with faith as they feel his presence. Help us to know and to make him known in the breaking of the bread. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. 
Gracious God, guide the feet that walk in doubt and uncertainty and have lost their way on the long roads of the world, particularly in the face of pandemic. Dispel the anxieties and the false reports that keep people apart. Set them free with the good news of salvation. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Gracious God, bless our prayer and partner in mission, the Anglican Board of Mission, as it serves the Church in Australia and overseas. Inspire its work and its vision that all may come to know your justice, your peace and your love. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, Lord, in your mercy. Gracious God, may Christ be the guest at every table. May we see him in the stranger as well as those close to us, and make the weary and hungry welcome for his sake. Lord, in your mercy. In your Gracious God, we pray for the homeless and for those who wander without destination. Grant shelter to the unprotected, bread to the hungry, and rest to the weary. Bless those who do the work of relief at home and abroad. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Gracious God, bless those who bring aid to the infirm in our community. May they be an example for others to follow in the paths of mercy as we seek your healing presence for Alan Tracy, Mary Jones, Mer Pizzi, and all afflicted by the pandemic and other diseases. Heal each according to them. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Gracious God, be with those whose day is far spent and who are near to death. As we remember those who have died in recent days, particularly those who have died as a consequence of the pandemic, those who have died alone and afraid. And for Constables Glenn Humphreys, Josh Preston, Lynette, Lynette Taylor, and Kevin King. We pray for those who are with Christ in the eternal feast of his love and see him with the eyes of perfect sight, as we remember with love and affection those whose anniversary of death occurs at this time. Rest eternal grant unto them, O Lord, and let light perpetual shine upon them. Lord, in your mercy. We pray in the name of Christ, our companion through every day. Almighty God, you have promised to hear our prayers. Grant that what we have asked in faith, we may by your grace receive. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Jesus said, Come to me, all who labour and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Let us pray. We do not presume to come to your table, merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table, but you are the same Lord, whose nature is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. Christ, our Passover lamb, has been offered for us. Therefore, we come to celebrate the festival. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith with a sincere and a true heart. Merciful God, our Maker and our Judge, 
We have sinned against you in thought, word and deed, and in what we have failed to do. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. We repent and are sorry for all our sins. Father, forgive us. Strengthen us to love and obey you in newness of life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, who has promised forgiveness to all who turn to him in faith, pardon you and set you free from all your sins, strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We are the body of Christ. His spirit is with us. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have these gifts to share. Accept and use our offerings for your glory and for the service of your kingdom. Blessed be God forever. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. All glory and honour be yours always and everywhere, mighty Creator, ever-living God. We give you thanks and praise to your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, who by the power of your Spirit was born of Mary and lived as one of us. By his death on the cross he offered the one true sacrifice for sin and obtained an eternal deliverance for his people. And now we give you thanks that you raised him to life triumphant and exalted him in glory. By his victory over death, the reign of sin is ended, a new day has dawned, a broken world is restored, and we are made whole once more. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, we ever praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest.
Merciful God, we thank you for these gifts of your creation, this bread and wine. And we pray that by your word and Holy Spirit, we who eat and drink them may be partakers of Christ's body and blood. On the night that he was betrayed, Jesus took bread. And when he had given you thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take it. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup and again giving you thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, shared for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Therefore we do as our Saviour has commanded, proclaiming his offering of himself made once for all upon the cross, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming again, we celebrate with this bread and this cup his one perfect and sufficient sacrifice for the sins of the whole world. Renew us by your Holy Spirit, unite us in the body of your Son, and bring us with all your people into the joy of your eternal kingdom. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, with whom and in whom, in the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, we worship you, Father, in songs of never-ending praise. Blessing and honour and glory and power are yours forever and ever. Amen. As our Saviour Christ has taught us, we are confident to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. We who are many are one body, for we all share in the one bread. Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bearer of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, Redeemer of the world, grant us your peace. Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed.
Lord you Christ, the bread of heaven. Let us pray. Eternal God, giver of life and the breaking of the bread, we know the risen Lord. May we who celebrate this holy feast walk in his risen light and bring new life to all creation. Father, we offer ourselves to you as a living sacrifice through Jesus, our Lord. Send us out in the power of your spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Well, good morning once more to you all around the world and here in East Ivanhoe and various parts of Melbourne. Thank you for joining us online for this live streaming of this service of Holy Communion. The service will be edited to join with a hymn and a postlude prepared by our director of music, Roger, and that will appear both on YouTube and Facebook and uh, later on this afternoon. I'm grateful to all those people who deliver the Pew Bulletins, which are greatly received, and a big thank you to all those involved in our Ministry of Presence through our telephone tree, which again is uh, greatly received. We're all going well in this parish. We are blessed to be in good health physically and mentally, and uh, I thank you all for your support of one another and of ourselves and of your neighbours and friends. We continue to uh, care for those in our community and those around about us and support local businesses as best we can uh, in this time of pandemic. I look forward to talking with many of you during the week ahead and joining you again on Sunday next for our live streaming of services here from St George's East Ivanhoe. And our very best wishes to those of you around the world, particularly in Europe, the United Kingdom and North America, who is uh, suffering so grievously from this virus. Our thoughts and prayers are with you this day and always. Amen. The God of peace who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, the great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you what is pleasing in his sight. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you now and always. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Amen.